Hello and welcome to this uh, course design practice 2 module 29. We were talking about CNC uh, tooling, rapid tooling, rapid prototyping, these different areas and topics. Uh, and also we were discussing about how to do CNC programming where we had learned about the different formats namely the, um, <coughs> the fixed sequential format, the uh, tab format and the word address format. In, in context of that we had also looked at the American National Standards Institute's code of how you define controller capabilities with different words to uh, talk about the different aspects of the CNC program. Uh, as you may recall, a program contains of statements or blocks and uh, each block contains certain commands. So, it is pretty much a language that you are developing with uh, a certain controller. So, uh, we will continue on that and try to look at some of the other aspects of that word address format. And uh, the one of the important aspects that such format has is feed and speed commands. Uh, these commands are used to specify the feed rate and the speed uh, to be used during the machining operation. And the feed command is generally given by the script F and uh, <coughs> the speed command again given by the word S and it is followed by the required speed which can be mentioned as numerals and if I say S20 or F20. Uh, it basically means that this 20 is mentioning the uh, ability, uh, it is mentioning the number which corresponds to uh, the initial value uh, of the coordinate system which has been put as G90 or G91 where it could be inches units or uh, metric units respectively. So, the feed rate and the speed used during the machining. Uh, are very crucial uh, in determining how long it will take to make a part. Units of cutting conditions can be specified in a variety of ways uh, in the NC program. Feed rate may be specified directly in units per minute or units per revolution where units may be in inches or millimeters. Preparatory functions um, 92 to 98 are used to designate how the cutting conditions are to be uh, specified. So, this kind of gives you idea of how you prepare the axis before starting the machining operations. Next in the line comes identification commands. Uh, these are used within NC program for simple task of being able to identify certain entities within the program. Uh, the most uh, common identification command is the N word which is used to uh, identify the individual block or the line along the whole descriptive uh, which is called a program. So, you typically have um, values of n which leaves gaps in between so that you could insert in a increasing sequence as many modifications as possible to a certain set code which has been drawn out once the program is uh, freezed. So, the identification data in this case consists of integer numbers written in a format given as a part of the machine specification. Uh, usually 3 or 4 digits are used uh, and the leading or trailing zeros are not suppressed. The n word is purely for the convenience of human writing or using uh, the program so that they can distinguish between various blocks in, in the program. In fact, when the NC controller numerical you know uh, executes the numeric control, they will just go on reading out in the organized sequence of um, how they are outlaid in the program. Okay. So, they really do not need the command line number, but for a programmer who is there on board, one needs to understand what is corresponding to a com command line and between which two command lines you want to specify some improvement or some modification that you want to make to the code and for that this n word is a very important aspect in the in the block itself. So, the machine control unit itself does not use the data contained in the end it is only for the operator and the programming sake okay, that this n word is being used. So, because the controller does not use the block identification data it is not strictly necessary to number the blocks in any particular order. However, for convenience of human users blocks are generally numbered in ascending order with increments of 5 or 10 between uh, consecutive blocks. And uh, the reason as we all are aware of having increments of 5 or 10 is that when necessary additional blocks may be inserted in the program while maintaining the generally ascending order in which the blocks are numbered. So, this is all about identification commands. Uh, there are some other commands which also are of the identification type. For example, the T word represents the number of tools. So, basically you could have a certain tool number let us say T01 or T02 in a magazine um, and you may be able to choose one over the other using this particular word here in the program. So, you 
get to um, implement that a certain set of blocks which are there in a sequence manner is using what particular tool or what particular tool number okay, in a magazine of tools which is otherwise not distinguishable unless there is some kind of identification code there. So, you used to identify individual cutting tools okay, within the program. More than one tool is needed to complete the machining operation in most of the components and therefore, it is important that we have a magazine of tools okay, and so therefore, identification number serves as that particular number which will identify one tool over the other. Obviously, uh, these are used widely for multi-station tool turrets or tool magazines. Uh, so, the programmer uses the T-word to specify to the controller uh, regarding the various tools available should be used for a particular machining uh, operation. And the format of T-words usually consists of two unsigned digits after T. Other identification commands are used to identify special sections of the part program such as loops and macros that can be executed more than once during the running of the program. We also now talk about miscellaneous commands. Miscellaneous commands are majorly used to control a variety of machine functions uh, that are not covered by the other commands. Uh, the address of M followed by two unsigned digits uh, is used to specify the miscellaneous command and uh, examples could be many. For example, there could be a spindle on and off, there could be turning coolant on and off which are directly or indirectly related to the machining operation of the process, initiating a tool change for example or clamping and clamping a workpiece. So, these are commands which are of some importance when, once it comes to the whole machining setup although they are not directly involved in the machining process okay. and so therefore, um, you, can, you can say that um, these are essentials for a program to be executed although they may not directly participate. Another case could be interrupting and restarting the program execution for example or stopping the program altogether, rewinding the program to a certain level. Okay. So, all these things come under the purview of miscellaneous commands. In fact, if I look at what are the common M codes uh, which are there normally for the standardized programming format. M00 suggests program stop, M01 is optional stop, 02 is end of program. You can also start the spindle counterclockwise or clockwise. So, clockwise becomes M03, M04 becomes uh, counterclockwise. You can also do spindle off, that means uh, stop rotating the spindle, perform a tool change using M06, missed coolant on or a flood coolant on mode, you know, or generally a coolant off mode as M070809, so on and so forth. And then end of program rewind is M30. So, these are some different M commands or miscellaneous codes which have been characterized. So, it is usually permissible to program more than one miscellaneous command in a given block provided that uh, there are no conflicting effects. For example, in a certain block you can say coolant missed coolant on and then you it is not a better idea or it is not a good idea to do the flood coolant all as well because they will have conflicting interests and there may be an error. Uh, in reading. So, unless those kind of uh, uh, you know factors are arrived at, you can have more than one miscellaneous command in a single block. I would also like to now come to a certain different aspect which is about canned cycles. Now, one must understand that the whole drilling cycle what we did in the last you know few slides uh, can be represented as one unit or one command. Okay. So, every time there is a drilling operation, you need not go to the different aspects of okay, take the drill at a certain position, uh, you know dive into the work piece by having a z negative value up to a certain extent and then come out of the work piece. Okay, so, all these things can be avoided by using some kind of a canned constitution where all these things are put together under one command uh, you know or one let us say command line which will execute the whole drilling process. So, the canned cycles are particularly used to define sequences of machining operations and particularly those machining operations which are very frequently used, okay, which uh, is quite unnecessary to every time start writing a subroutine of how a particular machining operation will work. Rather, it is better to define it as a G code, so that the whole G code would be instrumental and the line therein would be instrumental of giving the whole idea of how the machining would happen in that particular operation is to be executed. Okay. So, it is uh, sequencing the machining operations uh, uh, which are frequently used with different machines, different components and uh, you are kind of standardizing some of these machining operations okay, 
and uh, assigning some special preparatory functions so that every time you use the function and the command block it signifies. Okay. Let us look at for example, I was just talking a little bit earlier about a simple hole drilling operation. You saw in the fixed sequential format how the hole drilling operation was carried out on a particular block uh, just in the last uh, lecture. So, it involves the following sequence of operation here. Uh, let us say the first sequence is that the positioning of the tool is made just above the point where the hole is to be drilled. Uh, then you set up the current correct spindle speed okay, and then feed the tool into the workpiece at a controlled feed rate to a predetermined depth and retract the tool at a rapid rate to just above the point where the hole started. So, these four uh, commands are implemented in sequence when we talk about a drilling process. So, position the tool set the speed that means rotate the spindle, start feeding the spindle inside for the drilling action to happen and then retract the tool okay, uh, so that you can you know you can keep the coordinates in a manner so that the hole can either be a through hole or just a um, you know blind hole uh, depending on what is the thickness of the, the block and thickness of the proceed of the, uh, the drill. So, all these things can be executed exactly at the same sequence. Okay, for any simple drilling operation whatever it may be regardless of the machine used by just setting up the numerical values every time like the coordinate can be different where the tool has been docked or the, the proceed can be different by how much the tool has to be uh, proceeded into the workpiece and remaining everything being the same. So, the sequence would all, all operate if you design a special drilling cycle okay, which is of code G81 and uh, let us say in this particular cycle you mentioned that at a certain command block uh, number the G81 code exists corresponding to the initial x and y position and I am taking the same values as the fixed sequential format was describing. Let us say 25.4 mm and 12.5 mm of x and y was the first point over which the drilling was being carried out. If you remember there was a block in this case and we were trying to drill from a certain point which is somewhere here which reads 25.4 and 12.5 xy and then going into this whole thing and coming out back okay. uh, and the tool was placed somewhere here from which you had to come to this particular position. So, automatically the tool from its docking position comes to this and then goes to an extent of z equal to minus uh, 10 millimeters and comes back. Okay. So, the feed at which it should go is also defined and um, you know that is m 500 and m 08 would correspond to the uh, you know the, the flood coolant on case uh, where um, you know uh, when when the spindle is on uh, one has to ensure that there is proper uh, heat transfer etc so that there is no fracture tool fracture which takes place so this in a way is an example of a canned cycle okay so the whole sequence is now programmed under one line the location and depth of the hole to be drilled, the speed and feed, everything is in that same line. The height above the part surface for positioning before and after the drilling, all specified in this particular block, one block. And automatically the code is designed in a manner so that it will understand what are the x, y's and what is the z and what is the uh, sequence at which G81 needs to be executed corresponding to a special drilling cycle. There are many other commonly used CAN cycles. It could be used for spot face counter boring. Uh, deep hole drilling, uh, tapping, through boring, uh, both in and out as well as in uh, chip breaking or chip breaker drilling, uh, through boring with dwell. Okay. So, you have different down feeds in all these uh, certain action points which are uh, what happens to the uh, final depth where the tool reaches and then certain points related to how the tool has to be retracted okay. and then these codes are accordingly designed in a manner so that every time this uh, challenge is faced you know for designing a CNC code you just simply put the command and it executes a sequence of events just like the drilling okay, where uh, you know uh, only this value specification or specified value in a block would suffice for the whole operation to take place. The effect of any one of these CAN cycles obviously would be cancelled by another G code. So, let that be G80 function that is normally used for cancelling any of the uh, CAN cycles. So, please make sure that whenever there is a question of separate uh, you know parts of the blocks which would be executing CAN cycles you must cancel it uh, to get back into the normal process of you know uh, 
the uh, the machining okay so uh, last but not the least uh, there are special characters which are also a part of the code uh, these are in addition to the commands outlined and um, special characters normally have special effects uh, some of these characters for example are used with all uh, controllers uh, but other can be with specific controllers uh, there is a character called percentage sign which would be common to all the controllers and it is generally used as the first line of the nc program to suggest that it is a program start okay so the character signals the controller whenever the beginning of the program has been reached during even a rewind process of the program and uh, uh, an eob or end of block as we commonly call is to signify that um, you know at the end of each block of the program there should be such an eob so that it can go to the next block okay so the special character is produced by hit of a carriage a return on a on a keyboard so whenever you are entering the different uh, blocks so after a block is finished typing you generally enter to go to the next line and so that's enter automatically gives you a end of block um, command okay so the controller then reads that line up to the eob command and then starts the next line character itself does not print on the screen but it has to be there because of the tabbing that you are doing okay uh, when the program is printed and uh, during coding uh, the end of block is very very frequently represented by star symbol okay which says that it is as well the star, the the end of the program so what i am going to do is to actually help you to write certain codes and then move ahead probably in the next section uh, for the um, the other very important part on rapid prototyping and uh, rapid tooling so let's look at this one example problem here which uh, describes uh, the machining of a simple aluminum pin with a certain head as you can see in this figure right here it's a simple turning example and uh, here um, uh, some specifications are given as to what would be the final dimension of the pin which we want to program and uh, a 2 inches diameter blank is carried out or used for uh, uh, formulating this pin which has a head dia of 2 inches but then uh, there is a tail dia which is 1.5 inch uh, also a 2 and a half inch long block needs to be used in this particular case for uh, you know the turning operation and uh, there are certain assumptions which uh, we follow for uh, writing the code the first assumption being that the center of the left face of the pin that is this face right here would be used as a program zero so every time uh, there is a machining operation to be done it has to be with respect to the program zero and all the dimensions are herein defined with respect to the program zero you know that the z would be positive as the tool moves away from the origin in this particular case in an axial manner parallel to the axis of the workpiece this right here is the workpiece okay from which uh, you know it is a cylindrical uh, simple you know aluminum blank from which you have to uh, do the machining so the tool tool start position further is given to be 0.2 inches off the diameter and uh, 0.1 inches of the right face this is the right face right here at the end of 2.5 inches from the origin and so we go uh, again 0.1 inches to the right and then because diametrically it is 0.2 inches radially it should be 0.1 inch so that is where the tool position should be somewhere here okay so 1.1 inch toward the right and 0.1 inch away from the radius uh, of the particular pin so there is where the start position is it is uh, represented by this particular dot and uh, we also are wanting to define through this machining process um, a certain sequence of operation it is not a direct cut affair uh, you are having two roughing cuts of 0.1 inches deep and one finish cut of 0.05 inches deep okay so they will be taken simultaneously and then there is a spindle speed of about 1200 rpm a feed rate of about 12 inches per minute which are used for uh, machining and then finally uh, we know that the controller specification that is being defined here is n3 g2 x plus minus 43 
4 3 y plus minus 4 3 z plus minus 4 3 r plus minus 4 3 f 4 0 s 4 t 2 m 2. So, this is how the controller is specified and we want to find the x values uh, as or we want to program the x values mostly as diameters. So, whatever we will be mentioning um, would be automatically two folds. Okay. Um, so, uh, we start our programming now. So, let us look at how we will uh, do the solution. So, let us say uh, we start the program with a percentage sign which indicates the start of the program. So, let me just write this down here start of the program, program start. So, then uh, we want to set up the particular uh, system of reference including whether it is going to be inches units or whether it is going to be absolute uh, positioning. So, in this case we will use assume absolute positioning we will write the first line of command starting at the identification number n 005 and say uh, g 90 and g 70. Okay. So, this corresponds to uh, this specifies absolute programming in inches units. The next option could be for uh, speed feed rate units and you know which tool number so that we can identify that it is a, a turning tool, a, a cutting edge which has to be aligned you know in this particular case the spindle can uh, make the workpiece rotate. So, I will write the next line which is N010 which is the identification number followed by G98 and G92 okay, and this corresponds to tool number T01. So, this so uh, let us just uh, demarcate the different descriptives. Okay, so, the next descriptive is about rapid. So, specifies units for speed and feed rate loads the first tool so then we go into n015 the next particular line and then we try to rapid position the tool to the start position. So, we have G 0 0 and then we have to write what is the position aspect. So, in this particular case if I go back to the drawing here uh, the start position is somewhere here in this particular case at a distance of um, you know 2.2 inches in the y in the x x direction. Okay. So, as you remember that in this particular case the, the z axis uh, is along this direction. So, this is the positive z where the cutting edge of the tool which is probably starting or somewhere here. Okay. It has to start somewhere here or start uh, from the you know because it is a single point cutting tool obviously. So, it will have to go parallelly to the axis. Uh, after it has gotten certain depth okay, into the. So, the depth can be in this direction and parallelly to the axis is in the minus z direction. Minus z corresponds to is the tool approaches the, the work piece. So, sitting in this condition if I look at my right here. So, this corresponds to the positive x. So, this was what the um, sign conventions said at the very beginning okay. and x and y do not matter in this case because they are pretty much similar to each other. So, we will be actually starting only with the x and the z coordinates and in this particular case uh, the x coordinate happens to be 2.2 inches. Remember we are programming in diameters. So, if we are talking about 0.1 inch radius it corresponds to 2.2 inches diameters. So, that is what the whole idea is that x values are to be programmed as diameters. So, you have 2.2 inches and then you have uh, 
you know 1 inch off the 2.5 inches here from the origin everything is with respect to reference to this point right here which is the origin. So, it is 2.6 inches okay, along the z direction positive z direction and we are going to write this here as x 2200 z 2600 f0 okay. and uh, this corresponds to the rapid positioning of tool to tool start position in the next line we would uh, like to put another uh, command n 0 to 0 and write you know exactly in the first uh, instance when we will like to shave off point uh, 1 inches what is going to be the basic extent up to which the tool needs to be going. So, uh, if it is point 0.1 inches on 2 inches diameter it means that radially point 0.1 inch corresponds to the final diameter being 1.8 inches. So, I will say that for the after the rapid positioning of the tool to the tool start position which is uh, x 22 you know corresponding to x 2200 and z 2600. So, we want to make now uh, obviously something to position the tool to remove or shave off the first cut which is 0 0.1 inches uh, part diameter. Okay. So, uh, the first thing you have to do is to start uh, the spindle that means the work piece should start rotating and so therefore has to be a certain rpm you know which is going to be given to the the, the speed okay so in this particular case we will say that uh, the tool now needs to reach x uh, let's say z equal to or, or x equal to 1800 okay uh, corresponding to again the point of time when the spindle starts spinning uh, in the clockwise direction that is m 0 3 all the way when the speed of the spindle has been defined by 1200 rpm which has been given in the uh, question itself okay. and in this particular condition once the positioning of the uh, tool goes to 1800 what it means is that from this position when it is still off the uh, face of the work piece it is going in this vertical direction and standing here as uh, the spindle has started moving and the work piece has started rotating and this length right here is a diameter which corresponds to 1.8. Um, I'm sorry, somewhere here corresponds to 1.8 diameter or 0 0.9 uh, inches radius. Okay, so the tool in its current location goes to 1800 or 1 1.8 inches. So corresponding to the x. So because we are reading in absolute manner, please note that we are merely referring to the coordinates written here and coordinates written here without considering the plus or minus because everything written on the right side here and the downside here are all positives. Okay. So, in this position there is no feed given to the tool. So, the feed let the feed be 0. I will just write this down as uh, position tool to remove 0 0.1 inch of part diameter and start the spindle and so with everything else is ready and the work piece is rotating you can possibly give a feed and in this particular case we will write this command as n025 
the feed a linear feed. So, we will change the z 0 0 option to g 0 1 and uh, we have to go to a certain z value. So, in this particular case if you look at the z value which it needs to go to is actually corresponding to 0 0.5 inches okay, right about here which is the size of the head of the pin as given in the diameter. So, I will say this corresponds to uh, a position z 500 up to which the tool must go and the tool must do so with the feed which is given to be 12. Uh, you know the units are basically inches per minute as has been defined earlier uh, for the speed and speed rates in line 3 of this particular program. And so, you can say that this corresponds to the feed tool into the workpiece for the first case that is the 0.1 inches depth case. So, in the next step we would like to retract the tool to overlap the previous cut because obviously, uh, in the next cut we will again have to move from the start position. You cannot just uh, you have to complete you know the whole cycle and then uh, start. So, we will retract it. So, retract could be obviously rapidly uh, be able to get done and so we will do g 0 0 and write an x command of 1900 which again clears off the tool from the workpiece. Remember we had gone up to 1.8 dia and we are now going to 1.9 which is actually towards the right of 1.8 okay. and so it is still clearing off. So, we will say this is a retract tool option and overlap previous cut. In the next uh, sequence we will again go to the clearing off mode. Okay. So, uh, once we go out um, to that particular domain 1900 x 1900 uh, in this particular manner, okay, um, we can go to a sort of a safe zone maybe. So, we can say that we again rapidly position this all the way to z 2600 okay, to make it clear again at a certain feed f 0. So, let us say this corresponds to move tool to clear work piece you may or may not decide to go for this step you could actually directly proceed from the last step but because the start position is at that particular point it may be a better idea every time to take the tool to the start position and then you give the next feed of 0 0.1 inches which is uh, defined as a x motion of 1600 at feed 0 just as we had given 1800 in this particular step, we are giving now from 18 to 16. So, another 0.1 along the radius or 0.2 along the diameter. Remember the tool values have to be programmed in the uh, or the position has to be programmed as diameters. So, this is position tool to remove again 0.1 inches off. So, position tool to remove 0 0.1 inches off part diameter we will go like this again uh, just as we did in this step linear position all the way up to z 500. So, that we can shave off at a certain rate that is 12 inches per minute rate. So, this corresponds to feed tool into the workpiece. So, your two cuts are already done. Once this is done, we can probably again do the same process of retraction. So, we will now clear off the part diameter first. So, we will go G 0 0 and clear off to uh, x 1700 maybe. Okay. So, retract tool so 
So, this is to overlap the previous cut. Go back again into the start position, okay, if so that you can clear off along the z axis also. So, 0, 5, 5 is written as g 0, 0, you do not even need to derive g 0, 0 here, okay, just uh, um, you know z 2600, okay, g 0, 0 has already been programmed in the last step, give a <coughs> 0 feed in this particular case. And uh, this corresponds to again position, uh, so move tool to clear workpiece. In the next step again, we will have the finish cut. So, here we need to go to x equal to 1500, okay, corresponding to a 0 feed again. 1500 make sure that we have a uh, finish machining of uh, 0 0.05 inches deep that means 0 0.05 inches radius or 0 0.1 inches diametrally okay from the 1600 position that we had hit upon in the last step okay so essentially you are giving that finish cut step in this particular uh, you know instance and so basically here you are positioning the tool to take finish cut go deep into the workpiece. So, now you do G01, Z500, F12 in the same manner. So, by virtue of doing it, you are basically feeding tool into the workpiece. Again do the same step of retracting back, come to X2200 and uh, you know you could say that you are able to retract the tool in this particular case. Clear of the workpiece. Finally, again move clear to a safe position. and turn off all machine functions. So, you could see that how diametrically we have programmed and obtained a situation where we have um, two roughing cuts and one finish cut okay, together. So, this is uh, the whole program, you can find the program details here in a printed manner. Okay. This is how the print comes out to be when you want to extract it from the, uh, from the machine. Uh, I am going to close this uh, particular module okay, uh, because um, I think it has already gone overboard by uh, so many different minutes. So, in the next module, we will probably try and look into other aspects, some informational aspects related to rapid tooling or uh, even CNC tooling and how uh, those are important and those are fitted. Uh, you have more or less now had a very good inkling about how to do CNC programming, what are the basic aspects of uh, interacting you know uh, with the controller. Uh, and so, therefore, you need to understand in what capacity the tooling may be designed or made, so that now you can mix uh, various things together and <coughs> design and develop uh, different uh, parts. So, with that I would like to close this module, thank you very much.